Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Lindau and I am the salesperson at Trocti Building Systems. And today we are going to do another webinar. This one is about developing a financial plan. Basically, it's trying to figure out if building a mini storage is right for you in your area to see if you can make money or not. And, uh, you know, I've already done a number of these webinars. This one's concentrating on you packaging all the information together to try to get a loan to be able to build a self-storage. Now this, I am tailoring it to assume you're going to go for an SBA loan. And the reason I'm saying that is because this government program has helped a ton of self-storage developers be able to, especially ones with limited means, to be able to get into the business because they allow you to only have 10% down. And so we're going to get started. And one of the first two things that you need to do, there's two huge questions, is, is there demand for self-storage? And I've kind of already touched on that with previous webinars to see if the area can handle more self-storage. And then after that, can I build, find a piece of land to build on that I can actually make money? I do have a webinar about finding the land that talked in small amounts about making sure you figured out the financial uh, wherewithal. But this is, the one, this is the program where I'm going to go in depth with going through the basic calculator and our advanced calculator to figure out uh, if self-storage is good for you. And so when I would travel, I've been a salesman for Trocti since 1985, and when I would meet people, they'd always ask me these same questions. You know, how much land can I pay for? I mean, how much can I pay per acre? How much land do I need to make money? Uh, how would I run it? Um, do I need a manager? Do I need an apartment? Do I need all these other things? And how do I, what, what uh, formula do I use to be able to make money? And what is the expected rental rate? This is one of the huge things I'm going to talk about all today. Because in my view, mini storage development, the cost of our building, for example, the foundation, the the drainage, uh, well, not the drain so much, but the building itself costs about the same. I don't care where you build it in the United States. It's well, how much money you make depends on what the rental rate is. So it's very critical. And then different managing techniques. And we will also have another webinar about that later in the year uh, that talks about multiple ways to manage your facility. So to help answer these questions, we developed a couple of different calculators. The first one we call is our basic calculator. And that is on our Trocti website, which I am going to go to right now, where we are going to go through examples for you to understand how the process works, okay? And um, here is our basic calculator. This is what it looks in the front. I'm actually on our website right now going through it. it. Talks about all our products and services we have, but really what we're working on is our investment calculator. The first thing we talk about is land. What is the land price? And I am just going to go through an example here, okay? Where I'm going to say I found a piece of land for sale that costs $500,000. It is three acres, okay? Now, I don't want to spend money to figure out a site plan yet, because I just saw it, for example, on LoopNet. And I want to see, in this area, can I pay $500,000 for the land, and will it work? Now, this, we have a pull-up screen in coverage. If I am in Wisconsin, for example, that has a lot of rain, we have to follow guidelines for water retention, I'm only gonna get about 30% building coverage on that property. But for example, I might be out west that has limited amount of 
need for um, retention ponds and items, I can get more coverage, 30, 40%, okay? So I'm gonna take, for example, I'm somewhere in the United States, I can get 35% coverage on my three acre parcel. This will tell me I can get roughly 45,000 square feet of net rentable land, okay? Under that example, you know, I got what I could build on the land as a guess. Next, I'm gonna to go to what is my construction cost? I'm talking today in May of 2021. And so the numbers I'm going to be giving you is my guesstimates of today. It will change up and down on whatever's happening in the economy. And um, the easiest way to go is just put in a dollar amount, like let's say $50 a square foot it's gonna cost me to build this project, okay? If you are, and that'll put out a number. If you don't want to go that way, if you watch my cursor, I'm going to go to this enter expense in detail. Okay? And now I can do a real breakout. Let's say my building packages cost 650000 My excavation to build this was 300000 my foundations, I'm building 45,000 square feet at, or yeah, 45,000 square feet at $6 a square feet. So 45,230, 280,000, say $280,000, okay? Then let's say my driveways, I'm going to have roughly the same 50,000 square feet of driveways, at least probably 70,000 square feet of driveways. And if I use blacktop, uh, $3 a square foot is pretty be $210,000 of blacktop. Okay, I'm gonna have uh, no climate control, so I'm not gonna put anything in here, but I will have electric, then I'm gonna probably say as $30,000. Okay, these are all just guesses I'm putting in. I do want a fence. My fence gate security system, let's say, is 35,000. I have a small office. I'm going to put in a 100,000, and it's going to cost me, let's say, for permitting, it shouldn't, I need to still do a bunch of planning. I'm going to put 60,000 in. So it's going to tell me 1,665,000. If I scroll back up to the top, it's saying about a $36 a square foot. Well, that's a lot cheaper than what I did at the the uh, 50, that seems a little light to me. I probably would have to add more money in here to, because um, the cost would normally be higher than that. So um, let's say the building was 750,000, my other things we can change, but I really believe I'm sort of wasting my time at the moment. I would just go back, I'll leave it here at $38 a square feet. Now we're gonna scroll back down and here's the critical one. What is my average rental rate? I can put in an average of, let's say, um, $7 a square foot. But if you want it to be a little more accurate, watch my cursor go to the left here. And I am going to go into an average where a 10 by 10 unit, for example, let's say is $90. And a 10 by 15 is, let's say, $115. Well, look at my average rental rate, it's only 432. So if I put 432 in, that's what my income is. I'm going to run it, I did build an office. I'm gonna say it's 30% of gross annual income, okay? Again, if I don't wanna do that and go for each one exactly, my area, my property tax on 45,000 square feet might be 50 cents a square foot. So it's gonna be maybe $25,000. My operational expense, uh, I'm gonna do most of it myself. So I might only put in my um, items such as my um, insurance and snow plowing and other things. I might put in $10,000 and I'm gonna run it myself, so I'm only gonna put $2,000 in my management. Now that's my expenses, which is, if I go back to my 8%, which is super low, that would be not normal. Um, uh, one that I run remotely, one of the projects I own uh, run remotely um, is around 20%, so I could uh, 
you know, you can change this each time. I'm just going to continue and just see where this one ends up. Right now, interest rates, if you do an SBA loan, could be around 4% interest for the 25-year amortization, and I'll finance it at 90%. My assumption would be we could rent around 2,000 to maybe 2,500 square feet per month. That's a smaller site. I would say my value is around an 8% capitalization rate. Normal mini storages, how full are they standardly? Traditionally, in the last 30 years, it's about 85% break even, uh, not break even, but standardly full. But recently, we've been 90s or high 90s. So if I run this equation right here and hit the calculate button, you will see that I break even at 37% occupied. Okay? And that seems very low. I really think I've kind of goofed it a little bit in having my costs develop fairly cheap and my expenses a little cheaper. So if I would change my, um, oh, I changed my average, yeah, to about nine bucks. So if my expenses are way too cheap, I'm going to switch it to, let's say, 30% like I had originally, because I'm going to run it with a manager. Then we're going to close that. I'm not going to use that. And I go back down to the end and calculate what happens. Now it's more normal what I would have. Breaks even around 60% occupied. And that would be in a range of what I would consider good and worth pursuing. Okay, But I want to do a stress test on this. And I go back to the entry and say, let's say I don't build it for $38 a square foot. Let's say I build it for $50 a square foot. I'm going to close all that expense detail because I don't even know yet. Okay, Let's run it to $50. I'm going to go back, calculate. Now what happens? Look at I added $10 a square foot and I only changed it six percentage rates. That really didn't do that much. That's why you can afford to pay more on some things if you have the income. So now I'm going to do another stress test on this and say I'm not at $9 average, I'm at $6 average. Okay? Now if I do my stress test, I made 88% of break even. Notice how that change was massive. This makes it so this I don't make any money. I cannot do it at that such a low rental rate to make any money on this. Now, I'm going to go to this page for a second. Let's break down what it's telling me. At the top, if I'm 90% occupied, my gross income is 246,000, my debt service is 160, my operating is 82,000, my cash flow is 4,000 bucks at 90%. Man, that doesn't look good. So if I could go back, and let's say I do get the rent, let's say I'm going to go to eight bucks a square foot. Okay, roll it back down to the bottom, calculate. Now we're at 74 percent. It's barely in the realm of okay. Okay. Now maybe I did it too high. Maybe I got to try to build it cheaper. Maybe I can't have an office. You know what? I'm going to change this. I'm not going to have an office. I'm just going to build, run it remotely and do it all that way. And this is a huge trend with our customers and the American people and how it's working. So if I go back to say this exact same deal, I'm going to, let's say I'm going to take off the office, which is probably going to save, let's say, um, I have no idea, I'm just guessing, uh, I'm going to go eight, so I'm going to be $42 a square foot. Oops. $42 a square foot. Okay, I'm going to save eight bucks a square foot, but my management's going to go down to let's say 20%. Okay, now I'm going to calculate what just happened. Look at, I'm back down to low. So what we're seeing is a trend to try to remotely run, take out the manager if possible, and that brings us into now this is under the 6%. So I know if I can build it for $42 a square foot, run it for 20% of gross annual income and be able to build it at those numbers, it looks pretty good. So 
it's kind of telling me maybe I can't afford the office in this situation. Now, for example, if I was in a town that has a much higher rate, okay? Let's say I'm at $12 a square foot because I'm building climate control and other things. Um, and let's say I'm at $62 a square foot. And I'm going to operating expense back to my 30%. Okay, just hugely changing the numbers. Where does that all come up? I break even at 65% occupancy. So I'm in those high number areas. I can afford to have an office, pay a lot more money for the building, and my gross income has dramatically increased because the rental rate has changed. So to me, this tool is used to see what I can pay for the land and and everything else, okay? Because I could do this exact same scenario if I just want to go back and say now the land is 900,000. I just changed it to 900,000. Roll, scroll down to the bottom, hit calculate. I break even at 69%. So I paid 400 more thousand for the land and only changed it to 4%. Not that dramatic. So maybe I can pay more for the land, try to build a little later, and see that it still works, okay? So this tool, I think, is outstanding for you to be able to get an idea in your community, you know, what you can do. And what is very scary in some of the rural communities that you will see, or many areas, is that everyone is full, but the problem is the rental rates are just so low because in some parts of Wisconsin, that's where I'm talking, that's where I live, that the rental rates are $4 a square foot, <laughs> okay? There is no way, you know, you can do any of this stuff I'm talking about. I'm going to do 20% operating expense, even if I build it at 42 bucks a square foot. You can roll it down to the bottom, calculate. I'm at 108% occupancy. You're dead. You cannot build it. It does not work. You sure not can pay $900,000 for this land. And what? And if I, uh, if I go to back to here, and let's say I get it for $200,000, this three acres, what happens? Calculate. What happens? Still barely make it. So a lot of areas that you'll see 100% full where the rental rates are so low, it's going to be hard to build it because you can't build it cheap enough to be able to make it all work. What you'd want to do in those areas is buy the existing facilities and then raise the price, which a lot of people are going after right now. So this tool can show you where, where you can be successful or where you are driving yourself off a cliff that you will not be able to make any money. So. This gives me an idea. I'm going to try to find a nice three or four acre site. I'm going to make this happen. Now I'm going to get out of this and, um, and I'm going to go back to um, our calculator here. Because the next thing you're going to do is find a property. Let's say we find this property right here. Uh, there's a site plan done. If you look at this site plan, the building on the right is climate controlled. Then I build three different buildings that are not climate controlled. The building on the top of the screen is actually kind of a larger RV boat type unit because the customer knew that uh, there's not a lot of them there and a lot of people had demand for it. This red circle is I'm going to build it in phases, phase one and phase two, because I don't have enough money to do it all at one time, and I'm not quite sure, you know, what units I need. So the key part of this is, you see it on this drawing, but I'm gonna, oop, going to show you here, is what's the unit mix for phase one, phase two, and the entire project when it's built out, okay? With this site plan, you know, our company will help you with some of the preliminary, but 
What you have to do, if I'm going to go back to the site plan now, is hire a site engineer to determine where the retention pond is, what your setbacks are, to give you an exact. Because it's, it's time to spend money to get this plan. And it's time because you've already know that you're within the realm of making it, it'll work. That you have to get a site engineer to make sure it all goes together. Then you determine what the Unimix is. Then I would put it into what I call our advanced calculator. And our advanced calculators, you'll see it right here. I'm going to scroll to it now. And I've actually completed one. And um, uh -oh. sorry, I'm going to find our TriP advanced calculator again. This time, um, we look at all our calculators. Here's our advanced calculator right here. You have to log into this. I have a login for me. So now the login. What's good about this login is this is the only time we know what you're doing. We can see. Nobody's really looking, but we can see. But you can save it and keep coming back and forth. Because the problem with the basic calculator is every time it erases. And so you got to redo the data. So in the basic calculator, when you get to somewhere, you might want to print it off so you remember what you did because it won't save it. When you go into the advanced one, the advantage of that, welcome back, Jamie. I have two different projects I'm working on. And uh, the, um, we're going to go look at the first one here. Um, there's the one for my son that I'm working on. And the other one here is the one that I'm working with you guys. And that is, you have to put in your information, you know, where this is being built, and all this information you will keep. Next, what makes this one far superior as far as understanding the income? is that we're putting in what we expect every single unit price to be. So in that site plan that I just showed you earlier, there is five by, this is five by five temperature controlled units. There's six of them and they go for $55. This is my per month income. This is what the average rental rate per year, if I have it. What my five by 10 climate control would be, what the rental rate would be, okay? 10 by 10s, 28 of them for $95, $26.60 a month if I have them all rented. 10 by 15s, the TC, temperature controlled. I put every single unit in, all that I'm doing, okay? And now, let's say for example, your site plan had a special one that wasn't on this list. If you look right here at my cursor, add custom unit, I can click this and I can add. I have a, I have a 12 by 40 unit that um, I'm going to have four of, three of, and that is 4,800 square feet or 480 square feet, and I'm going to sell those for $300 a month. Okay, that I can add it to it. So I can add additional units onto here that's maybe custom for your particular size. Okay? I'm deleting that row because that's really not in my unit. Now it totals how many square feet I'm building. And there's a box here that if this is a phase, let's say I already had this built, I can say that it's all rented, then I'm adding another one but that's not the case in this scenario. So I leave it blank. Okay, now this is my average rental rate. And I hit this next button. This next button, now I get in the cost of all the development. My land turned out to be 610,000. And I put in all of these expenses that I know to build it. If you wanna to go to this and do not have all of these numbers. You can just put in my $40 or $50 or whatever per square foot in, and when you do find out what each one of them are, then you can add them to be more exact. 
okay? I'm just putting in each one here, going all the way down, and these are how detailed we can get when you break it all down. And you will need to have a bid for all of these that you would have to show your banker to be able to get the loan. But in the beginning, you can just go. Now, there's other things we added. How much working capital do I need? That is, the day you open, you don't have any income. So you're going to have to pay a certain amount of money every month to pay for the note. Now, one of the great things about the banks today is they'll let you to have two to up to three years of just interest only. So you do not have to pay the principal. Okay? And normally the first year, you don't have to pay the high property tax either that you'll get after you're actually open. So, so here I'm saying I'm building this whole thing. It's $58 a square foot and 58 cents for what this project was. Okay? I'm borrowing the money at 4%, 25-year loan, 90% I'm borrowing. This is my loan amount. This is what my monthly payment would be. This is my annual payments. My management expense, I said my property tax is $28,000. What I'm paying now here, I have $10,000 because I'm still running it remotely to have minimize the expenses. I'm not hiring a manager. So I'm at 22% of gross annual. I hit next again. Now this one adds a little different. Do I, how many units am I planning to rent a month? And I'm saying I'm going to rent up 15 units a month. Now that means one every other day. In reality, you, in the beginning, a lot of times you rent more than that. But what happens is after time, you have people leave. So it gets slower and slower. You can change this to 10 units to 20 units. I probably wouldn't go ever go over 20 units because that's actually a lot in our industry. I'm saying the valuation is 7.5% capitalization rate, and I'm going to hopefully be equalized at 90%. It's very rare to be at 100% full, and if you are, you're too inexpensive. A lot of the ones that are always at 100%, they shouldn't be. They should raise the rent because then they'll have always something to rent. A lot of people like 100%, but you're not trying to maximize the income. So now, if you go down in this, it tells you a lot of information. At 90% occupied on this project, I can make 282,000 as income. My debt service is this, my expenses are 52,000, and this is my cash flow, okay? I'm breaking even at 54%. And I needed $45,000 to pay for this that I had to borrow to be able to get to the break even. Okay? Now, there is a cash flow analysis that comes with this that tells you per month what you get. Okay? And that is very interesting. And we're going to need that information to be able to apply it to get our financial data for the bank. I'm going to back up again to go back to here to look at our beginning. And when you look at unit pricing, I actually have put in phase two. You see this plus sign that my cursor is at? This is where you add phases. I have phase two in here because I've added two more buildings after it's full. And I added four more 10 by 10s, 30 more 10 by 20s. And I made a special size, it didn't work right. I added um, these 12 by 25 units in the next phase, okay? And so I had 15 of them for $200 a month. So I'm adding another 10,000 feet in this. Okay, I'm gonna hit next. Now, when I look at my expenses, so I just put in the expenses additional expenses to build that next phase. And what you're going to see is those next phases are pretty cheap because A, I don't have any land costs. Normally I have most of my grading done. The building costs are much less expensive. Like on this, I'm $23 a square foot because all I'm only doing is adding the buildings. So that's why you, a lot of times when you build it, phase one might break even at 80% occupied. 
But then by the time you go phase two, phase three, it'll bring it down. And uh, so we'll look at this analysis. We're having the same interest rate, the same everything else that we had before. I added another 4,000 to manage these, mostly for the property tax. And we're gonna hit next. So now when you look at what we can make, that's looking at phase one and phase two, okay? So this little, I just, this little blue dot. Now if I wanna just look at phase one, my break even, I'm sorry, is at 67%. If I do phase one and phase two together, I hit that, that's where it went down to the 54%. And so it's very nice tool here that you can put your entire project that you want to completely build, but do it in phases, and then click it that they're all together or one at a time. And what's just like what we saw here, this, this phase one is at 67. This might even be 80%, and you'll still do it because you're gonna make out by the time you build phase two and phase three. Because the history for me in this business is that most people always phase their projects. You know, they started with one or two or three buildings and then added one or two, one or two, one or two. I talk to you 10 years later and you tell me you have 17 buildings on this site. And I go, wow, I thought you were starting with two or three, but they just kept adding. And so um, it's an awesome feature. Now today, a lot of people are building more at one time than they ever did in the past, but I've always liked the phasing feature because you get better at knowing what the unit mix you need and changes that you can have. So I believe this tool is awesome for you to get what you're needed for as far as this cash flow, okay? Because whatever this data shows you here in the cash flow that you make, you're going to have to talk to the banker. Okay, I'm going to get out of this now, and we're going to go back to a form right here. Here, here is um, we can print out this advanced calculator. You can email it to yourself. You can email it to all your partners to look at to change. And this right here is a printout that you see that is what comes off our, our program for anyone to use for free. Now, the next, I, um, the banker will give you forms that they need you to fill out. And this is me taking our form and then filling in their form with the data, which is, how much do I make per month after I am open? That's why it says year two here, because I figured it took the first year to build. After year two, when you start renting, my first month, my income would be $1,900. After the second month, you know, it slowly goes up, because I'm saying these 15 units per month. So one section they need to know is what's your income for one year, two years, how, many, how big this project is three years they can even do then that's the income then the next section is about your expenses now I just threw kind of a grenade bomb of what all of the expenses are but you'll see here you have to get in more detailed information of what you're doing for expenses right here I'm saying advertising three hundred dollars a month Normally, that would mean you might do Google AdWords, okay? And that's something easily done, and Facebook is f relatively free for you. You can do Facebook ads, other types of items that I'm saying here. The other thing that we are talking about, bank service charges. That's going to be one of your higher expenses, paying for the, all these credit cards people use. In the beginning, it's not much because you don't have any income, but it's a big thing you have to look at. Then other items, roughly you might have some postage later on, not that expensive, because mostly everything is emailed. You're going to have, you're going to have to somebody mow your lawn, you're going to have to somebody snow plow your place, 
you know, what is your internet and everything you have, and your if you have climate control, what's your HVAC costs going to be, you have to put in here. I've darkened all the ones that I've added. What is your property tax going to be? And so you're going to have to add them up per month and per year because what they want to get is how much you're losing in the beginning and where do you finally come to breaking even and then the potential profit after that. So this is a form. Now, everyone talks to us and then immediately wants to talk to the banker. I'm telling you, the banker can't answer much until you fill out this form. And you can't fill out this form until you have a real plan because they cannot confirm or deny that you can be available for this uh, loan unless you need to get a plan need to get what the income this plan will generate and then the expenses to run the plan. And once you have that, then you put it all into the, the banker's form to be able to then go and get your project you know, approved. Because here's what can happen. You know, let's say it doesn't look good. I'm at 88% occupancy, you know. The main thing you try to do is try to be able to build more square footage somehow on your property, okay, to be able to make it work. Normally, you can't build it for less money, especially in today's inflationary environment we're under right now. And it doesn't improve it that much, the cost per foot compared to what the rental rate is. You know, you want to improve the rental rate. That's what a lot of people are gleaming to. They see the higher rent for climate control and they're jumping on it. And they're trying to build all climate control. But you got to watch out some areas of the country, climate control are not getting a premium compared to regular. So be a little leery of that. Or the last, it doesn't work. Don't build it, okay? Because some of these do not work. The math is bad. And not every mini storage makes it. Our company, me personally, I've witnessed people go bankrupt because they didn't follow a good plan. Usually their site wasn't very good or they built way too much too fast and put themselves underwater and the rental process was slow because they opened in a bad part of the American economy. Today, 2021 where I'm talking to you, our industry is very hot. A lot of people are using self-storage, so it's very good. That hasn't always been the case every year of the last 40 years that we've had it. So what I hope is that you can find a place to build a mini storage to build a successful self-storage, not be, to make a business that you own, that you'll feel proud of, that will be successful and hopefully grow into. And that is what Trakti is looking to do. And the, um, you know, we're here to help you with these questions. Um, a lot of people put in questions to us that uh, we answer, either you ask, ask the expert or myself or Steve Ajewski will uh, answer it for you. He has actually gone through the entire process of an SBA loan, so it's very knowledgeable to help you. And I know people have been asking me a few questions, so I'm going to go to them right now. A lot of people say, if I already own the land, that's easy, you know what the price is, you can put the land in as whatever what you paid. That doesn't mean it's the best piece of land. That's a whole other subject, but it helps you offset it. Now, the land value helps you with your down payment to be able to get the loan from the bank because they will use whatever that theoretically value is as your downstroke for the 10% that you need. Okay. Now, people have asked, I, with the, if you did boat RV, could you use this advanced calculator? We do have a separate no, one it's not up right now. for, oh, for boat RV but it's not working right now, I guess. So, yes, you actually can. The thing is that you would want to put in, you make all your custom units. So a custom parking unit, 
custom canopy unit if you're going to build those, and the larger units you're going to have, and we'll put the dollar amount. It's all the same calculation, whatever the cost would be. So you can use the advance, you just have to make a lot of custom units, and it would work the exact same way. So um, that's what I would use. And in reality, if you're anywhere near close to getting it, I would dump everything into the advanced because it's giving you a more accurate picture of the income and a more accurate picture, well, really the income because the cost you don't know yet and you'll just keep filling them in. But you might get a piece here and a piece here of what my real cost would be and then you can keep adding it to it and you can save it because there's no way you can just go into this calculator and know all the information. So that is what's very nice about it and the phasing feature. It really opens your eyes to what it will be down the future. Just my, I've gone through this with my own child and he's building one right now and our phase one doesn't look very good at all, okay? But boy, by phase three, it's awesome, okay? And so we just know what the hurdles are and what the expectation is and you'll have to communicate that very well with your banker to make a good plan on when you're really going to be started, be open to be successful. Now, I don't know if there's any more questions and I hope I've helped you here today, but um, otherwise, please review each one of these webinars for each one of the points, but um, use these calculators to help you work with your banker to make sure you have determined a good financial viable self-storage and hopefully you were very successful and hopefully you give Trakti a chance to give you a quote on a building when, uh, whenever that time comes. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you're successful in your self-storage endeavor.